Welcome to the demonstration video of short circuit analysis using IC60909 standard in ETAC. So we are going to perform the short circuit analysis on the same network which we used for load flow analysis. So if you see, when we performed load flow analysis, we configured two systems. One was the normal operating condition in which we had some of the equipment in normal standby mode. Whereas we also performed uh, load flow analysis on the maximum operating condition in which every equipment within the industrial network was in on position or closed position. So everything was connected to the system. For short circuit analysis, we need to perform two kinds of analysis. One is for the maximum fault current and one is for the minimum fault current. When we talk about maximum fault current, we say that in maximum call of a fault current, we have to select the configuration of the network with, with, with the help of which we can get the maximum current. And how can you get the maximum current? Maximum current will only come when you have a system configuration in which the impedance of the network is reduced. And one of the easiest way to reduce the system impedance is to have multiple parallel paths. So for instance, if we see here, we have two power grids. So if these two are connected, the equivalent impedance will be much less. Similarly, these two transformers in parallel will have much less impedance. For instance, if the impedance is 9% here and 9% here, it means that the equivalent impedance will only be 4.5%, 9% divided by 2. Same goes for these transformers and same goes for these transformers. So if we use this maximum configuration, it means that we are going to get the maximum fault current in this case. And other important thing here is that if we see our power grid and we go to short circuit, here we have modeled the short, same short circuit for the three phase as well as single phase. So it means that if we will be using this system to calculate single line to ground fault or unbalanced fault, we may not be able to get this. The reason is simple because we do not have modeled the power grid for the single line to ground fault or unbalanced fault. But if we see other equipment, for instance, transmission line, and if we go to the impedance of this transmission line, here we have positive sequence and negative se sequence separately. So this means that although we do not have modeled a power grid for the single line to ground fault, but we can get single line to ground fault with respect to transmission line data. And same goes for the cable data. So if I go to cable data and impedance, we see here we have a zero sequence different than positive sequence. So it means that we will be able to get different short circuit level for unbalanced fault because we have modeled it properly. So if even if we use this, this same model for a single line to ground fault or unbalanced fault, we will get some results. But for now, as we discussed that in an industrial network, three phase short circuit is far more worse as compared to single line to ground fault. So we will be emphasizing more on three phase short circuit. So we have uh, this configuration available for the maximum. This is exactly what we want. So we are going to first perform the short circuit analysis on this maximum configuration so that we can get maximum fault current. So in order to perform short circuit, what do we have to do? We have to go to this uh, tab now. Before for load flow analysis, we were using this PQ load flow tab. Now for short circuit analysis, we have to use this short circuit analysis tab. When I click on this tab, now my network configuration has been selected for this. So this is my network configuration. Now let us see what kind of configuration I have. So if I go to edit case study, you see here short circuit. So my case name is short circuit. So I selected this. If I go to case study, I can give another name if I want. I can add new names into this. But for now, I want to keep the same name. Now I need to select on which buses I need the short circuit. So I need the short circuit at main bus A and B. So let me select main bus A and what is the name of the other main bus 2. Okay. So we can select main bus A and main bus 2 and then we need on bus A and B. So bus A and bus B then bus 1A, 1B, bus 2A, 2B. 
and because these were my main uh, buses so i am selecting i am trying to see the short circuit on my main buses you can select whatever you want similarly the standard so for here if you see in my etap 9.1 19.1 i have three type of standards this ic standard ansi standard and gost standard for, because we discussed iec standard so i will be performing using ic60909 standard so what do i what i am interested in i am in maximum short circuit so i am going to select maximum short circuit what will happen in maximum the c factor is going to be considered as 1.1 for the medium and hv buses so c max for z adjustment do i have adjustment i am not taking any adjustment and the calculation method for x by r for uh, peak kilo ampere i am using method c and these are the other configuration which i will remain uh, which i am going to keep them as it is so for the adjustment do i want change in the transformer impedance you can use this if you have used this tolerance in uh, level in your different equipment then you will be able to use this but since i do not have used any tolerance so i cannot uh, i can just uh, uncheck it or if you want to make sure that you want to calculate the exact impedance whatever you have given in your equipment so you can simply uncheck these values similarly for alert alert is going to tell me my alert based on the equipment capability but if i press okay here if you see if i double click on my bus and if i go on my rating i haven't provided any kind of rating for here i haven't provided any bracing rating for here see so asymmetrical 0 kilo ampere so i haven't provided what kind of kilo ampere i can have on my bus bar so this is exactly what i want from the from the planning stage what i want to make sure is that what should be the capability of number 1 my buses and secondly my switch gear or circuit breaker so if you see the circuit breaker here here you see 0 kilo ampere 5 cycle 0 kilo ampere so what i have done is i haven't included any kind of requirement for the circuit breakers as well so i do not know because this is the planning stage and i do not know what will be the exact short circuit current in my system so i do not know what kind of capability device capability i should select so that is the exactly reason why i am perform performing short circuit analysis so once i am done with this and i know you see the colors has changed for the buses where i want to perform short circuit analysis now what i simply have to do i simply have to perform this duty so if i run three phase device duty when i click on this because this was on prompt so it is asking what should be the name of my file so i am performing maximum short circuit so let us select the name of the file as maximum short circuit and press okay now etap is going to do its work solve the network and there you go so here we have the result and if we see the result here so what do we have at the main bus at the 132 kb bus my short circuit level is 11.218 kilo ampere similarly at my 13.8 kb bus my short circuit level is 29.146 kilo ampere at uh, my 4.16 kb bus my short circuit level is 11.787 kilo ampere and at my lv bus which is my 0.48 kb bus my short circuit level is 34.532 kilo ampere so this means that if i want to select the bus bar so at least my bus bar should be able to withstand this much amount of short circuit current and you can also see that i am getting the contributions so etap tells you this contributions also so the contribution coming from the grid power grid it is being shown here similarly the contribution coming from each motor or my lump load because why would i get the contribution from lump load because my lump load is a combination of motor load and static load so the motor load for the motor load we provided some kind of lock rotor current So if I go to my short circuit, see, I have provided some kind of lock, lock rotor current. Although this value is uh, as per the uh, actual value, or what do we call the default value of the E tap? So it this uh, fault current is based on the default value. But if you have the original value of the lock rotor current, you can use the similar value. Similarly, 
for each type of uh, motor if I double click on this motor and if I go on to the impedance here you see the locked rotor current is there so this is taken up as a default so when I selected my nameplate of my uh, this mo uh, motor I got this value so if you know the exact value you can use the exact value but however based on this I am getting some fault current contribution from each motor my each and see wherever I have static load I do not get any contribution if you see from here also this server rack A or server rack B because it was connected to a static load so no contribution is there but receptacles A and B which are connected to a lump load I am getting some contribution similarly light A and B no contribution is there so this way you know now we know from here that this is the kind of short circuit contribution we have from each of the bus so if I want to use a switch gear or procure a switch gear what kind of switch gear I need for 132 kV my switch gear should be at least more than 12 kilo ampere or even more than this so what do we usually do we usually tend to keep some kind of percentage so at least 10% should be kept so what do we mean by 10% so 11.21 multiply by 1.1 so whatever the value you get from this this is at least should be your device capability so similarly for 13.8 kV bus I should get a switch gear of at least 29.146 into 1.1 is equal to 32. So my switch gear should at least be able to withstand 32 kilo ampere. So I should get at least 40 kilo ampere breaker because 24, 25 kilo ampere breaker won't work here. But here 25 kilo ampere breaker will be enough. Here also on 4.16 uh, kV bus, my 25 kilo ampere will be okay. But here I should at least have 40 kilo ampere on the LV bus. So this way you can select the rating or that protective capability or the uh, uh, short circuit stand capability of your switch gear.